Uh, okay, so goes check check on the turn. Five of clubs on the river, and you put them all in. Uh, so, what are your thoughts here? Uh, well, I have jack high, <laughs> um, and I can't see another way to win the pot. Hey guys, how's it going? Gareth James here for mttpokerschool.com. Joined today by a very special guest, none other than the 2018 WSOP main event Europe champion, Jack Sinclair. How you doing, Jack? Hey Gareth, nice to be here. I'm glad you managed to uh, slip the Europe in there. Uh, yeah, just, just in time. <laughs> people, people make that mistake. They make that a lot. Think, not, not very frequently. I feel like you, uh, no, you should be, um, you're still a world champion in my eyes. And hopefully in other others' eyes as well. That's uh, what I keep telling people. Yeah. <laughs> so how are you doing? Yeah, all good. Just chilling. Um, been actually taking some time off poker for for the last couple of weeks, kind of like everyone else, I think. Um, yeah. So excited to do a little, get a little content going. Yeah, I'm excited as well. So we've got some hands from your 10k scoop main event run. Um, so I looked through it and you you actually played 770 hands. Now, we're obviously not going to go through all of those today, um, but we've picked out about 20 of them to, to run through. Do you have anything else you want to tell the viewers before we get started or do you want to just go straight into it? Um, so well, this is the, the 10K one, uh, 5 mil guaranteed. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's very rare that you play seven, seven, 770 hands in a, in a tournament and don't win it or mm. you know, don't even get to heads up. Um, you know, spoilers. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, as you can guess, the structure was really, really good. Um, and it's kind of like a weird it, tournament. Like it's, it doesn't really play like a 10K online. Kind of plays a bit more like a 10K live. So it's kind of right up my wheelhouse. Um, but yeah, uh, should, should be interesting. A lot of, lot of uh, fun hands went down. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of excited to, to get in and see what, see what uh, we find. Okay, great stuff. So just to give everyone some some background, I I've run all of the hands uh, in Pio and in uh, simple three way. So we'll we'll use them if we if we need to, if we feel like we we want to have a look at what the you know the GTO solution uh, looks like. Um, but yeah, really just want to be focusing on analyzing the hands and and see how we get on. Okay, so the first spot then you open King Ten suited here, folds the big blind. He calls and he checks. And you choose to check back. Um, so I thought this was quite interesting to see a check back here. What do you make of it looking at it now? Uh, yeah, so like first thing I think in this kind of spot is obviously you could just simplify a strategy and bet a super high frequency, like maybe only check back the hands you really want to check back, which would I guess be jacks would be pretty strong contender. Um, and, you know, maybe like ace jack would also make some sense um but even that's a pretty good bet so yeah i i wouldn't mind betting even 100 percent in this spot i think it would be fine um i generally these days i'm playing quite a heavy check back strategy um like i'm not going to go super in depth into it but you can probably figure it out for yourself that that i find if you think people are playing a sort of much worse strategy once you check back um then you sort of it it incentivizes you to check back obviously and then once you start doing it you start to develop you know uh, a sort of wide check back strategy and this kind of hand like it makes sense in check hand bet i think it probably is is you know obviously want to bet king 10 of hearts a little bit more than like king 10 of clubs um but you know there's only three king 10 suitors so it's not like a huge huge yeah. difference um but yeah i mean i i think like i just basically i just play a heavy check back strategy in general at this at this point in time i think that yeah this hand could be a c bet i, I don't think it's a, a big deal either way um i can't say i had some like overriding reason why i checked back this exact combo except for the fact that you know it's it's a reasonable one to do so uh, okay. but yeah definitely has enough equity to, to c bet for value yeah so yeah, I, I mean, I would uh, be betting this this board in this spot. Uh, so what, seventy-ish bigs hijack versus big blind, pretty pretty high frequency. Um, but yeah, as you said, like you've started, to, uh, you yeah developed a, a checkback range and or checkback strategy, heavy checkback strategy. So that's uh, that's why. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, I think that this hand was just just to talk about the flop strategy, really, um, because uh, yeah, and then he leads, um, you call, and then he checks uh, the river. So maybe there's something to talk about on the river here. Uh, do you ever think that you could you could value bet here? Um, I think we almost like have the best hand, really high percentage of the time here. Um, maybe always, unless he has Ace Ten specifically yeah. or like Queen Three, I guess. You know, that, that sort of hand class is like the only thing he's really checking. Yeah. Um, that that we lose to. The problem is like he doesn't really have many hands that worse than us that can check call. Like the bit the bet big on the turn, like it doesn't make sense for him to just like come out with the bomb with like seven, eight, eights or nines or something something of that region. Mm -hmm. Um Jack Ten is you know, I could see it, but it's not that many combinations, right? Nine yeah. ten, it's still it's already getting pretty thin. So the, the issue really here is that, like, yeah, we probably have the best hand, but like, I'm really struggling to come up with a hand that he can call us with. Like, his, he's probably just check folding here, like, I don't know, probably like 90% of the time or something. Yeah. Something, something really, like a really very exploitable amount by him check folding. I would always be looking to bluff if I had a bluff in this spot. Um, and probably going for a small size. So I wouldn't mind betting here for. For, you know, obviously, I know like Pio probably doesn't like betting small in this spot, um, be, but uh, you know because if your hand has crosses the threshold where you want to reopen the action, you want to just like it should be worth a bigger bet. Yeah. Um, but given his range in this spot is going to be so um, so capped and weak that uh, capped is maybe the wrong word because he could still be going for a check raise. Yeah. Like that's the one class of hands that he can still have. Um, but you know, uh, so that also makes us want to check back a bit more. But he's, but again, it's extremely rare that he's going to have a check raise here. I think. Yeah. So what's um, the... he's just, basically he's just super bluff heavy here. He's super air heavy. So right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would get here, you know, with with what you know any check check back call turn hand that is worse than ace high. I would just bet here for a small size as a bluff. So what's the worst hand you would bet for value here? Um, if you don't bet this one. Yeah, I mean, it would have to be the worst hand. I guess Jax makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. uh, in that spot. Ace ten, I guess, would still bet because then he could have king ten, yeah. which which helps a makes lot. Sense. Um, and yeah, uh, Jax obviously is beating Ace ten as well. So, you know, I mean, I wouldn't mind betting this hand for value. Honestly, I think it's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I tend to find that if with guys like they lead turn big and they somehow have a really strong hand here they're probably just going to like over bet river because mm -hmm. because it's not a line where i'm going to have many value bets right when he checks no so so i mean that just i mean i, I probably don't want to spend too much time on this hand given that it was you know only one one bet went in um but does that then point towards you not wanting to check back the flop because 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 of that reason like you just very rarely have some strong hands or do you just feel like population <clears throat> just doesn't play well enough versus a check back here well well i mean we, you can sort of see the reasons for my over like okay this hand is just forget about this hand for a second the king 10 right yeah like think about our range and what we can deduce about his range on this river like we could we have like almost complete clarity over his range at this point in this in this in this hand right like we can think about even value betting this hand um but it's not like we you know it's not like this hand is a slam dunk two street value you know even if we bet flop right mm -hmm. um so yeah, so okay. we're getting you know a, a decent chunk on the turn from his air hands yeah and on the river we get to play you know i'd say close to perfectly against his range you know, it, and not not GTO perfectly, like exploitatively perfectly. So I think we're making a lot of uh, money here. This with by having a checkback strategy, like the King Ten hand is kind of like, you know, it's it 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 works so well as a bet and a check. You know, we just flopped like pretty good. Yeah. So um, uh, so you don't really have to worry about trying to like eke out extra EV with this hand, but but you know, you can see how. When you have a checkback strategy, you, you know you you can mix it up and and see how things develop, you know, and it, it it's actually helps you learn a bit more as well, right? Yeah. You know, if I only ever check back the the ace high on this board or something, then then okay, yeah, maybe I never get exploited for doing that, 
or maybe I do, because, uh, you know, but, but you don't, if you never have like the check back call call or, or so, you're not going to learn what sort of hands they're going to bet bet with. Mm -hmm. That's true. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, yeah. so, you know, when developing new strategies, it, it, I think it's quite important to, you know, throw in some hands that maybe you wouldn't originally think to do so with, um, to, to sort of, yeah, just for practice really. Yeah. Um, you know, I know obviously you can, you run it in, in the solvers and stuff, but you know, then they're going to tell you to play a, a very high C bet strategy. And then that doesn't really help you develop your term, your check back strategy. Right. Mm -hmm. And it true. also doesn't help them yeah. know what to do versus the check back, which then helps me again. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Very good. Okay. And here, Jack eight, let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I would have actually quite liked to see a, a small bet on the river, um, just given how how full of shit I think his range is. I think bet like tiny and then call is even the best, uh, okay. the best strat there. Nice. So next one then, uh, similar stack depth then, playing about seventy bigs uh, effective, uh, seven handed middle position versus big blind, eight three deuce board. Uh, he checks. Um, we'll just we'll, we'll just run through the hand and then we can we can go back and talk about it. Uh, so. You bet about uh, just, on, just over a quarter pot. He calls, uh, turns a six of hearts, goes check, check, and then the river, he leads, and you fold. So let's go back to the flop. Um, uh, what do you think, what do you make of the, the bet here, and, and what was your reasoning? Yeah, so once again, I c uh, could use a check back uh, strategy here, um, which I think would be fine. The th one of... Uh, Ace King is one of my preferred bets on the flop, you know, out of the ace highs, um, because firstly we dominate a lot of his check call range. Uh, when we bet quarter pot or close to that, we're going to get calls from most ace high with a backdoor. Mm -hmm. So having Ace King just completely crushes that part of his range. Um, so we want to put value. We want to put some money in there with, with uh, Ace King. Um, this hand. I mean, it's going to be pretty dicey facing a check raise, but I think like it's not so bad. Like we can just we can float a check raise here. I think if we wanted to, yeah, for or, sure. Or you know, make a make a tight fold if if we think the guys that you know a bit bit on the tighter side. Um, this hand. The other good thing is you know turning an ace or a king is obviously very good for us. Um, and if we check back and it comes an ace or a king, it's like I think it's actually harder to. It's more believable almost, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I, I like to have, you know, I'm gonna want to have some ace highs in my betting range um, for sure, you know, so so I can get by on the ace and the king turns. Um, and also, this hand just has like a lot of equity against even pairs and stuff. So, uh, so I'm very happy betting this hand. Uh, I think it would also be a fine check back, but I would rather check back something like ace ten, uh, just because it it when you get called by ace jack, you're behind. Yeah, yeah, of course. So on these low boards, um, I think you know the solver is going to show us to, that we want to have some bigger bets as well. Is that something that you tend to do? You tend to go like big, small, and check on these boards, or would you just tend to go for a small bet and check? Yeah, I think I think betting big here is is totally fine as well. But the, like I said, they, I don't want him to fold ace high here. So um, from a purely explosive standpoint, like I would much rather bet small with this hand than 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 big. Just to keep ace, other ace highs in. Okay. Uh, if I was going to bet king queen here, then big sizing makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Um, or just any Broadway combination. You know, any Broadway combination with a backdoor is going to be a decent big bet on this board, right? We have like good outs and decent equity. You know, good, good decent run out potential for for barreling and such. But but we and we want him to fold ace high. So so with those hands, it makes a lot of sense to bet big. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, cool. I think that's about it. And then on the turn, uh, choice to or decision to, to check back. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I find like a lot of people have sort of uh, a, an auto barrel button when they turn a flush draw. Um, I think it's quite often a pretty big mistake because you and this exact spot not so much um, because we're we're deep. Like we can bet call here, um, but. Even then, you know, like I would not love to see to face a check raise here with this hand. I mean, yeah, we've got tons of outs and and stuff, but like getting check raised in this spot would just be two pair plus pretty much all day. Mm -hmm. So 
depending on like how big the pot is and everything, it might be even a fold uh, versus check raise here, because I just like don't see what what bluff he can check call flop and now check raise turn with right like only ace four of well I mean if he had ace four of hearts then we we blocked that anyway um, yeah so you would have to have some some complete wacky check call on the flop to have like a, a flush draw on the turn. Uh, yeah. or, and there's, you know, he can't pick up a straight draw really here, right? Because, unless he has, uh, I don't know, nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So, so anyway, uh, that's kind of a bit more specific to this hand. But, but uh, I find that oftentimes when you're when you turn a flush draw, you actually want to start checking back a lot more because, especially with the ace high one as well, because if you if you can't call a check raise, then you end up blowing yourself off your equity sometimes. Um, and and then you also end up just kind of making them fold worse hands anyway and you know you can just check back and, and realize and you have a nicely disguised flush um based on how most people think about these spots and then um also you still have ace high which is you know got some straight down regardless yeah okay and then river he leads uh so i just thought maybe like would you ever uh, try and bluff catch here or you just always think it's uh i think it's a fold uh, I think in I think this is a fold because the the six is just a really bad card, um, completing four five. So like his only bluffs left are now ace high, and I, it's pretty rare to see people bluff ace high in this spot. I think, um, you know, they generally try and stick to bluffing with less showdown value, like perceived showdown value. Um, you know, and I mean, all I did was bet quarter pot on the flop check back turn i could like he could conceivably still be winning with ace five right so when people could win with a hand um they don't tend to bluff it the other thing the eight pairing is really bad as well um i mean it's not as bad as a three or a deuce pairing it's, it's kind of i guess it's kind of a neutral card really um yeah. uh but but anyway i i just you know this this run out i i think is not is not like a a green flag for them to start bluffing a um and b like the six completes is is straight draw like you know okay i'm trying to like he could have some king high flow on the flop that now bluffs and he got me with that but i, I even have a king so i just think i just think like he's not really gonna have enough bluffs here that we can call si yeah so i was gonna you know continue to play devil's advocate um because we you know bet small on the flop so he could conceivably have some pretty loose floats like two overs and a backdoor flush draw you know I, I i don't think it's inconceivable that he could have like jack ten of spades jack ten of diamonds here that then knows that he never wins at showdown with jack high mm. so yeah I, I think that's i think that's reasonable but um yeah. but i think that also you're going to get a, people are going to fold these hands a decent amount especially in you know if this is a big tournament for him you know 10k He's not gonna like want to be, you know, uh, rev the what's the old school term? It's the reverse float, right? The yeah. check call. Mm -hmm. The yeah. So he, he's not gonna be reverse floating some dodgy hand in in a ten k, especially on a Sunday. It's like he probably has enough tables that he's just gonna muck it. So okay, yeah. that's one factor. So I think the the combos are cut down. Secondly, there's not that many combos of these type classes of hands to begin with. Okay, it's a decent amount if they call all of them, but they can also check raise them. Um, so, you know, th these hands have like a lot of um, other options. So I find that they get cut down, but he's always going to check all, you know, um, some, a lot of, most of his 8x. I also don't see people, like, f remember I'm under the gun, so his, his whole flop strategy should be quite a bit tighter. Yeah. Um, than if I was in the button, where like he's significantly cut down on his 8x combos in that spot. Uh, he's also not going to defend so much deuce and 3x. Um, not that that really matters in this spot, because he's not value betting it and he's not bluffing it. Um, so that's kind of irrelevant. I don't know why I brought that up. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just think that like I, I even like quite a lot of the time this spot goes check check and they even flip the 9 10 of spades. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay why, why i don't know no. why you check call right. this hand you just wanted to backdoor a flush you yeah. know you wanted to backdoor mm -hmm. a straight flush but but you didn't get it so so you know i feel like they could play the flop two different ways and the, even the river 
doesn't always get bluffs. So I, I just don't I just don't see it that often that I'm gonna flick it in here with the yeah. Ace King. So just just one final question then. Do you think Ace King and Clubs would be a better call given that he's you then unblock all of his Ace High and, and potentially suited King High floats? For sure, for sure. I, I think um, a great check call here would be Ace Five of Clubs. Like would make sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, blocking the four five and, and yeah. having. Um, I mean, it's not. This is maybe not great because you're kind of calling because you might lose to um, ace high hearts. But even then, I don't. I don't see people bluffing ace high hearts in this in this uh, run out. Okay. So in that spot, like, I think it's a better call, but I'd probably still fold it. Okay. Um, I would call like fives and fours here for sure, which I would definitely have uh, same line. Mm -hmm. So that that would make most sense. Hey guys, Gareth here. Just wanted to let you know that you can purchase my MTT Game Changer course by heading to classroom.mttpokerschool.com right now. Yeah. Okay, uh, so open pocket kings here. Small blind calls, big blind calls. Flop, ace, jack, three. Uh, check back on the flop. And then two more checks on the turn. Uh, you bet, get raised, and fold. So... What? Um, let's go back to the flop. What do you think? Um, what do you think here? No, this is a sad hand. Huh? <laughs> um, yeah, the flop's not very good. Um, I think this is just always a check, uh, three ways. Yeah. I mean, the three way sims are always coming up with some surprises, but I, I think I think I'll put put a put myself on the line here and say that this is always a check. Yeah. Um, yeah, it you're is. just like <laughs> you won that. Yeah, match. okay, good. Um, yeah, there's just not enough worse hands that are going to get called by two different opponents. Um, yeah, especially when we have two kings blocking uh, king queen and king jack. It's no bueno. Mm -hmm. um, so the only decision then is on the turn. Yeah. Um, once it gets checked to me twice, like I could see this also always being a check um, in theory, and I would probably. I think I, I vaguely remember this hand and and not like being too like in love with the idea of betting here. Um, I quite I mean so the issue when you bet small here is like it kind of looks a lot like you have a weak ace or kings. Yeah. Like that's like the issue. Uh, but I don't really think that people are gonna like see this and then try and bluff you off an ace. Um, now they could, and I think it would be really good of them, like of either of them, you know, in their shoes, if I, in their shoes, if you see like the third pot here by imposition, like check raising turn with the plan to bet 90% pot on any river, is like a great strategy and it's probably going to print a lot. Yeah. But that being said, like my range looks very top pair heavy. And I, I think that there's a, people have a, they they see that and and they're able to assess okay he has really he's really asex heavy here so i fault you know and don't take that extra step of being like okay now i'm going to check raise and then barrel them off there yeah of course yeah. so if they have that in their game then they're always going to do it and you, and i'm screwed here um and if they don't have that in my in their game then this bet is is very good um well i want to say very good i think it's okay um because like the other thing is like they they're still going to check to me twice with an ace fairly you know reasonable amount mm -hmm. um but I, I tend to find people don't find the midi check folds in three-way pots uh, as much as they should like the three-way like in the small blind spot i i wouldn't be surprised if facing this bet he's supposed to fold a lot of jacks mm -hmm. um a lot of jack x here and i don't think people find those folds so um but like i really don't mind this bet in in that scenario but yeah i think i don't know these guys and you know they're, they're probably decent this was probably like a little bit too thick you know too um too out there this, this bet yeah so the the biggest the, i guess the biggest problem i can see here is that <laughs> it's just really tough for you to have a strong hand on the turn so i think you're absolutely right that they're probably not finding the bluff um so we shouldn't be too worried about that but it does make you know make you think a little bit more about the strategy and how you just can't bet too many hands thin here uh, on the turn because you know versus the check raise you're you're in a decent amount of trouble um, and you're going to have to fold. 
Um, so it, yeah, in the sims that I ran, uh, kings, if you were going to bet here, you have to you have to continue versus a check raise, um, which you know goes kind of against what you just said because you said that um, the small blind's not going to find enough bluffs, right? Or the big blind. I think the big blind's probably going to find more because he then closes the action and he can, uh, you know, the small blind's folded, so it's then you know, it's definitely heads up. But the small blind's still got the player to act behind him. Uh, who could conceivably have, you know, some two pairs here, um, Jack three, Jack four suited, you know, those kind of hands, Ace four, Ace three, five two suited. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that, you know, if we're trying to, let's say we go, okay, we're going to play like the solver. The problem with that is that they're not playing like the solver. So you end up, you know, losing money by bet calling on the turn here. Do you do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I was much, much more worried about the big blind check raising here than the small blind. Um, and I think the four is actually a pretty bad. Like, I, I probably underweighted how bad the four is in game, you know, because it kind of just looks like a brick a little bit. But it, realistically, like a four is is pretty terrible actually. Like, it, if the big blind could now have a straight and you know, in, in extra two pairs yeah in its range and it doesn't hit me at all like i never hit the four unless i have ace four yeah or fours i guess um yeah so so i think that that actually makes this a quite a lot worse like if the if the turn card was even a six then i would be quite a bit more happy to bet this hand yeah that makes um, sense. but yeah like i i think i think in general like if you're gonna bet here with kings like your assumption should be that you're not going to get check raised as a bluff very often yeah you know that's that's kind of the reason so then to like bet call is just logically doesn't make any sense no um unless Absolutely. you think they're going to pump up the check raise so much that you want to just like bet in juice um yeah but that's yeah that's kind of crazy and the, the small blind has to play somewhat honestly here with a player still to act and, and like you said you were more worried about the big blind so he can still have you know, two pair plus in this spot. Uh, so yeah, you're right. I think that the small blind is, uh, you know, very unlikely to find a bluff here. It has to play just just very very honestly. And I think we we can, yeah, fold more, fold a lot more in this spot. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's also kind of hard to even think of natural bluffs for him. Like queen ten makes a lot of sense. Um, but you know, like and then, you know, we bro block other broadways and yeah, you know, so. Yeah, I I, th I think he against a small blind for sure. I have to fold against big blind. It's like much more ugly. Yeah. Um, but then the big blind has more check calls, so you know mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah balances. Okay, another pocket kings then get three bets. Uh, so let's talk about the preflop decision. Uh, you just call here, and yeah, do you want to talk about that? Um, I think I would probably just go ahead and jam in this spot for you know just over thirty bigs effective. So K Rab is uh, Kevin Rabbit Show. Oh yeah, um, he's very very good player. Um, I kind of well, okay. So one of the factors when it comes to uh, with jamming or calling versus like thirty something big blind three bets. Uh, one you know once they've leveraged their stacks, so you can either jam or call basically, right? Yeah. Um, nowadays, I try and not 100% do stuff with all the hands, you know, like there's, there's normally some reason you can find to, to push it either way. Um, but as a standard, like I much prefer to jam aces here than Kings, um, because in, because the ace X makes up a really quite a high proportion of their three bet bluffs. Yeah. Um, so, so like when you think about his three bet bluffs, he can take any suited ace and bluff bluff three bet right conceivably yeah and then some also some offsuit ones um so given that like when you have aces you heavily block the bluff range yeah and when you have kings you kind of unblock the bluff range right now that being said i think kevin is actually going to have a much more balanced three betting range than most so he this applies a bit less to him um, but then I also have a suspicion that he might be three betting a bit more than, than most people just in general. So he might have a slightly heavier bluff range anyway, uh, which of, which makes me want to trap a bit more. Uh, so yeah, and it, with 30 big blinds, I, I prefer to trap the Kings rather than the aces, even though aces retains their equity a lot better. Um, 
I, I think that just uh, blocking the bluff range makes jamming aces um, really good because you end up getting called way, way more often. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, for 30 big blinds, obviously, like, you know, it's, it's, it's specific to this stack depth yeah. that this is the case. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I mean, I would jam here sometimes, but I, I, I for whatever reason, um, this time I decided it was a call. Okay. Uh, check. So the flop goes check, check. Uh, do you have any thoughts from his point of view at this point? Um, this is, board should be a pretty high frequency check from him, I think. Um, uh, so king queen nine is quite good for my range <clears throat> first like right off the bat like i have uh much more jack 10 suited than he does um <clears throat> i have uh, i should have king queen decent amount um shouldn't really i think i would always jam queens pre-flop uh it's just not fit because queens don't hold their equity so well on flops yeah. um just to go back to the preflop spot, I much prefer to jam queens there than kings as well. Um, so anyway, the other thing about monotone boards in three-bet pots is the out-of-position player is going to have um, way more is is way more polarized to a flush or two cards that don't that aren't a spade. Yeah, um, because I'm just defending way more suited suited hands. Like he can have a lot of offsuit hands, um, but I don't have so many offsuit hands. Like I fold. Uh, King ten off and yeah, uh, of you know ace ten off in this spot. So um, whereas he can have these hands, so in that spot it makes a lot more sense to check back on on monotone boards because I'm going to fold a lot of these hands to a bet anyway. Like you know I have ace eight of diamonds. It doesn't matter if he checks the flop or or bets it. You know I'm going to fold the turn anyway. Yeah. So so with that it sort of locks up the equity in his favor for for most turns. Um, so he can just check back and stab turn, uh, and there's not much I can do against that strategy. So I like the check back by him. Uh, the other thing to note is that when you have SPR of two, it's not so hard to get all in, um, even if you check back flop. Yeah, of course. Um, so so you can so like yeah, checking back here makes a lot of sense in his spot. Yeah. So just to go back to preflop, you said that he you know he had a suspicion that he might be a little bit more bluff heavy. Um, so. It feels like on these boards, sure thing you you know sure you're gonna have like you said like some gonna be flushes here and then you know all of your other suited stuff might might be a pair but it's not gonna be that strong apart from like you know king nine suited, potentially queen nine suited king queen suited, um, you know those those kind of hands. But if you do have like you said like the ace eight of diamonds and he's you know somewhat light, do you not think that incentivizes him to to stab here to you know to uh, uh, well, yeah, only uh, only the that these hands are going to fold the turn anyway. Okay, the, yeah, that the, makes sense. right. So yeah. so he, he doesn't lose against these hands by checking back, you know, because the yeah. board is never going to give me a flush draw. Right. Right. Um, so so all, you know, all my suited cards that aren't a flush now are still not going to be a flush draw on the turn. Yeah. Um, obviously, this board's very. You know, quite connected, um, but like the other thing, all my pairs are in the same spot, right? Like all my eights down, yeah, without a spade, <clears throat> uh, are, are screwed even even after he checks back. Yeah. Um, so there's less incentive for him to bet just to take down the pot now and kill any potential because so many of my hands have no potential. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, so six of spades on the turn. Then you decide to lead here. Um... <clears throat> What do you think of that? Yeah, well, it doesn't make <laughs> it doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I'm glad, so I'm glad you I, said that, and I did. Yeah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. So I think what I was thinking at the, this time was something along the lines of, uh, you know, to make a bet good out of position, it just has to be better than check, right? And that was probably my my thought process. Like, I don't want to check, and you know, let him decide the size but but even that doesn't make that much sense like it's not like i have any there's not like any bet size you can choose that's particularly bad for top set here right like obviously if he bets pot it's pretty ugly yeah but you know we we still just call like it's not it's not like they're not the end of the world and the problem you know like the main issue with betting here is it just like doesn't get any value like he's never gonna check back 
queens on the flop, I don't think. Um, so with that in mind, like, what's, I mean, I just see no point in betting um, in this spot. Yeah. So, I mean, what kind of hands do you think do check back the, the flop then? The, the flop? Um, well, I think one of the, one good category of hands to check back the flop is total air um, for a start. Like, you want to, I think you want to bet and check your air on the flop in this spot. Um, because air is one of the only categories of hands he can now bluff when I check to him Yeah. on the turn, right? So if he only checks back hands with a spade in them, then this turn card, he's got, he doesn't have any bluffs anymore. Um, so, you know, and then he would have to like turn pairs into a bluff or like a straight and then it's kind of like, puts those hands in open spot. So um, something like uh, ace 10 of diamonds, I think would be a decent check back on the flop to fill in the air portion. And then um, he could also check back like nut flush with the 10 or like ace 10, ace jack of spades would be the better nut flush to check back. And then he can bet like the ace eight of spades down. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to, it's very hard for him to get value when he has the jack of spades or the 10 of spades. Yeah. Yeah, or it's harder, I yeah, guess, for I should sure. say. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, other hands. Like, I think he mostly wants to bet his, like, sets in this spot, even kings. Um, probably wants to bet straight, always. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's probably that's probably it, really. Like, mm -hmm. you check back some fl like some flushes and and some air. And then maybe like some King X would make a lot of sense to check back Queen X as well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. So you would have, preferred... uh, I don't know what, I don't know what nine X he would have, but maybe ace nine yeah. would, would also would make a, make sense to bet flop going for triple bluff, mm -hmm. you know, blocking nines and clearing up some equity on the flop makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, so you would have preferred to see yourself check here. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, like you could bet 10% pot, I guess. Right. Would yeah. make would make some sense, but but betting a third is just yeah pretty senseless. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so next one then. Uh, seven handed under the gun opens. You flat ace queen suited. Flop top two goes check, and he bets pretty small. Uh, so what's your thinking here? Uh, you just call. yeah yeah. So this I think this should be a check raise um, because he bets so small that that there's just like way too much value um yeah. in it and and he hasn't put enough money in for for me to be happy check calling uh, with a hand this strong um uh one thing you know i i do like to check call top two at a you know quite frequently um especially on dry boards and i think i let that um interfere with just sort of playing normal you know yeah like like it's a nice um it's a nice strategy to implement to check call top two on dry boards because you or your opponent is so hard, is so more weighted towards bluffs in that spot. Like when you have a screen on a screen five, it shifts a lot of his hands to like the King Jack, King 10, Jack 10 type hands. Yeah. Which then, you know, have a lot of bluffing potential on later streets. Um, and also, you know, like seven, eight or whatever. Um, so you really don't want to make him fold these types of hands. If, if you have like bottom two, middle set, even top set, I think can, can make a better check raise than top two, just because like the middle pair, when they bet it, they don't fold yeah. to a check raise. Whereas gutters and, um, air, they will fold. So quite, quite often I would prefer to check raise top set than, um, than top two for these reasons yeah um but yeah in this spot like he's bet so small that i think i just have to check raise his hand anyway yeah i think we're often going to see from from solvers as well that top top two and bottom two get uh check raised high frequency and then maybe top and bottom gets mixed um not 100 percent sure on the reasons for that um but yeah i mean i would have i would have check raised here and i think you're absolutely right that the if he bets bigger we can you know just go for a check call more frequently but you know you just bet so small like quarter pot that we uh yeah i think we just want to go we just want to check raise 
uh, I've given him a couple of bet sizes, small and big, so the small size that he went for, and then a much bigger bet and check, uh, just to try and simplify things rather than you know five bet sizes or whatever that I see sometimes uh, on some sims. Um, so yeah, he bets small, and you can see yeah, ace queen. Um, we both thought was uh, it was more of a check raise. There's a little bit of calling though. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so like you can see ace five of diamonds, for example, just check calling a lot more frequently although then ace five off throws my theory out the window um that you know, <laughs> top and bottom we want to be uh, check calling a bit more frequently let's where's queen five so queen five is a check raise as well um but you can see like we you know we do check raise a lot versus a small bet um but then versus the bigger bet the check raise frequency you know is cut by two thirds i mean mm. check raising very little now and yeah as you can see ace queen of spades now becomes almost pure uh pure call cool. Yeah. So uh, I think that's a good uh, a good takeaway uh, for for the viewers is to you know to be very sensitive to size and um, to adjust the strategy based on uh, on how big they bet. Yeah, you can see the queen five is just like a slam dunk, unblocking the ace. You know, it's just yeah. always want to check raise his hand. Yeah. Um, you sure. know, and also like slightly vulnerable. So yeah. Um, you know, versus any size. So that's that's the thing. I would never check call queen five here. Um, and I think I just miss, you know, miss, uh, impl didn't implement the, the top two strategy mm -hmm. quite right. How often do you see these kind of, uh, bluff raises in, you know, 10 Ks online? Uh, not so often. The thing is like that kind of thing, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really see it. Um, because typically when people check raise flop, they, either give up or they fire off right yeah so given that like you're not actually this hand is going to be hidden most of the time right if they check raise then check fold turn you don't see it if they barrel off normally normally it goes through and you don't yeah. see it um so in like you know even if you're doing like mass database analysis you're you're not gonna see these hands as frequently as maybe they actually exist um yeah, I don't see it very often. Yeah, especially it's a, it's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't, I don't see like Ace Queen Five is pretty under bluff board um, by yeah. by big blind, especially versus under the gun. I think it's far, people find it very difficult to uh, um, to pull the trigger in that spot. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so turn is the Queen of Clubs, and you lead. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us the reasons behind uh, behind the lead? Uh, well, yeah, this is like a pretty decent leading card in, in general um, for out of position. We, in theory, have more Queen X uh, than under the gun. Oh, that actually, yeah, I mean, that is, should be true. Um, definitely defending Queen 9 off and Queen 8 off is pretty close, I think. Um, but, you know, just even having that much uh, is going to, with all the suited Queens, should yeah, course, uh, yeah. give us a lot more more combos. Um, and then under the gun can check back a queen on the flop. Um, so, but for quarter pot, he should have a decent number of his queens still in there. Um, so yeah, I think leading here makes sense. We also want to like throw, you know, have like our king 10 or whatever gets to see the river for a cheap price. So it's kind of like you, you bet the queens and your king 10 and ends up getting protected by it. So, you know, yeah. you get a cheap river with the king 10 and, and some value with the queen versus like his, you know, hands that would have checked back turn weak a sex and, you know, kings or so. Yeah. So I was just going to uh, say that I almost feel like I'd prefer to not have a, an ace myself here. So like, you know, if you had queen nine, queen 10, king queen, mm -hmm. that that strikes me as a as a better, better lead here. Um, I think just ha having the board pretty much locked up. Uh, and and also blocking the hands you want to continue, that it would be a better yeah better check. Um, but yeah, I, I I agree. It's the the turn. It's a great turn to to lead for for the big blind. And I think you know certainly in uh, you know we're starting to see more leads as as people study solvers a lot more. Um, they they recognise the cards that are better for if they're out of positions range. Um, but yeah, so let, let's go back into to Pi and have a look. Um, actually, let's let's play the turn uh, because he raises here, uh, and you call. I don't think there's anything really to to say about that. Uh, do you? Uh, well, I know what he had, so like I, you know, I can think of a better line. But <laughs> but, uh, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, he should have very low frequency raisings here, I think. Um, like that's a, a general theme you find when you you start looking at turn leads. Yeah. You know, one of the factors that make you want to lead turn is that it's hard for them to raise the card that you lead. Uh, so in this spot, like you know, if if we have way more queen x than him, you know, he can't just like casually raise no. thin for value or anything because like you know he's going to get screwed by that. Yeah. Same same goes for him, like trying to bluff that spot. Um, so you know, I expect him to be pretty pretty significantly polarized here to queen or bluff. Yeah, um, and this is Matas Symbolos. Um, I expect him to have a pretty solid range here, like probably probably one of the one of the few people that will have a, have a bluff here. Okay, cool. Let's have a look in uh, Empire then. Um, okay, so you call Queen of Clubs then, and you can see there's some you know a decent amount of of leading on this turn card. Uh, just really quickly, let's have a look at other cards uh so yeah it makes sense five yeah. and a queen the, the pair the board it's not an ace um so yeah i think that's uh something that you know if you have ever used solvers this goes for viewers obviously that you will start to see some some leads on uh, on those cards uh you know if it pairs the middle or, or bottom card <clears throat> obviously if the bottom if it was like ace queen deuce i think we're going to see less leading on it on a deuce because you know um, he's raised from early position. You defended in the big blind. You just don't have as many two x in that spot. Yeah, it will be sometimes though. I mean, you can see that eight gets led here. Uh, I'm guessing that's because we have queen eight off, um, and he doesn't. And queen eight suited, and he has neither. Um, would yeah. be my guess. So like, it can be a very subtle, like a, that's a very small part mm. of the range that allows us to build a leading range on an eight. Like obviously, that looks like what, whatever percentage that is. It's very small. On, um, on the 14%, eight. was it? Yeah. yeah, like 15, 14, yeah. 15%. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a very small percentage, but, um, but you know, that is, it, but we don't have any leads on, you know, the, on other cards, right? So, yeah. Um, although, actually, this, this, my logic doesn't make that much sense because then you would also sit on the seven and the six, right? Um, so it must be something to do with his, his CBAT strategy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting anyway. to see, like, you know, you'll often see, as it's already said, like when it pairs the board, but I think it's great that you've highlighted the eight and the nine because sometimes you'll see it like if it's it completes an obvious straight, um, then you'll you'll see some, some you know, 15% leading or 20% or, you know, a small amount of, of leading. But yeah, I think it's really, uh, really interesting, interesting spot. I guess, uh, I guess on an eight and a nine, he has more hands that can continue that are weaker. When you when you're value betting, so he has jack jack ten nine ten that can continue. Plus, you know, he already has king ten king jack uh, that is always going to continue mm. as well. Whereas on a yeah, seven and a six, these are check back hands as well for him. That's the that's the thing, right? Well, so, yeah, but he bets small, so I I feel like he might just bet range for. A oh small no, size. I mean on the turn. Uh, so oh, you, I see. You, okay, you yeah. lead cards that increase his check back frequency, right? Yeah. Um, on the turn. Yeah. So, you know, because now you have to force money in to prevent the check back. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I like that. I uh, like that a lot. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Ace Queen Suited just wants to pure check. Um, just, I, yeah, I think it probably is just because it, it blocks the hands you want to continue when you bet. You want to get called by all of these Ace X hands that he has, uh, plus, you know, others. And, uh, you know, blocking that Ace is not so good. Um, but, yeah, you can see. Like, I mean, obviously, in this sim. The ace queen suited doesn't really get to the turn versus in this line. Um, no, you're right. Yeah, you can see like just a small amount. I mean, if I, uh, it's not... yeah, I mean, maybe we just get to with this, you know, yeah, this that's, small amount. That's yeah. So, yeah, yeah um, you, you can't check check it versus the big c bet size. Um, yeah, it's still zero. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Like you, you don't want to bet when you have the ace in your hand. Um, uh, okay. You can't be super sure of this output though, because it's such a small. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's always but anyway, the... yeah. but I agree. I agree with your with your analysis. Okay, uh, cool. I, I should check this out. Yeah. Um, okay, so we lead. Do we want to say what his hand is now, or because it will make the analysis maybe easier? Sure. Uh, so he has he has queen nine suited, right? Yep. Um, and so it's really I think yeah again like. 
you can see up here so what jack's alluding to is the fact that this line isn't going to happen very often and when we have ace queen suit it's going to happen even less but you can see the lines now that we've taken like check call the small bet and then lead is happening less than one percent of the time so this does get throw the kind of the game tree into sort of i don't know i don't know how you describe it jack but it's not a it's not happening all the time so therefore these you know we have to take you have to be a bit careful a bit cautious with the with the output right yeah so i mean I, i'm not entirely sure how it works but i'm i'm very skeptical of looking down sims where like let's say you play a hand against someone and they bet like i don't know uh 70 percent pot on the flop and then you run the sim and that size is used half a percentage of the time the <laughs> yeah and but then you click through and you look at your river decision versus like you know a, a, in in the hand after they bet 70 70 percent pot but every single hand it's like a fraction of a percent mm. that it even gets there in pyre yeah um and i you know it could be that that's super accurate and if you you know forced a flop strategy and then checked it again it would give you the same output but i i think that it's not like that i think that that because it's such a low percentage it's uh it's not a reliable sim because the range yeah. is not it's not accurate yeah i think that makes sense and i often talk about it in other videos that you know if we were going to go down a line that shouldn't be taken like going down a branch of the game tree that shouldn't be traveled down that yeah you've got to be really cautious with the looking at the solution uh, i just want to go back to the flop quickly yeah so he does have some small betting so it's not like it's that's you know why the line isn't taken very often i guess it's just only 26 percent of hands are getting bet for this small size and then we're only leading or you're only leading 28 percent ish on the turn um and then when he when he uh i suppose he goes for the yeah so now well, at this the, point yeah. it's just a really low frequency line yeah but i, I mean th this i don't think is too too bad uh, I just mean like from when we have when we're looking at what we should do with ace queen, you know, in in certain spot like when we shouldn't have played ace queen in this way to begin with. Yeah. Whereas in, in this line, like all these hands, you know, it's like okay, it's not it's not super frequent that we get here, but um, this is still part of the main sim tree, let's say, you mm -hmm. know, for for these for these hands. Yeah. So I would say this is pretty reliable for okay. equilibrium play. Cool. Uh, yeah, so he has the queen nine suited, and you can see Pi just wants to go for a pure call, but he raised, and then we don't have any raises. Just go Makes for sense. a call, and let's see how the river plays out. River's a six of hearts, and it goes check, check. Um, so I thought this is quite interesting check back from him, because if, like, I imagine that he value bets, what, like, king, queen? And then mm -hmm. what, so like queen jack or queen 10 is the point where he doesn't value bet the river. Um, but this this line makes me feel like I don't really want to bluff catch too thin on this, or, yeah, too light on this river. Because if he's not betting a queen, like all of his queen x that land on this river, then we uh, should, you know, we should overfold, right? Because unless you obviously feel like he's just going to overdo it uh, with the um, boss. Yeah, I mean, the, it was very hard for him to to have a, a balanced range on this river card because he yeah it's really unclear whether he can value bet most like a lot of queen x here like queen nine i think is a pretty clear check back um in this spot honestly for him like it's it's pretty hard for him to get called by much worse here just given that like i'm gonna have a lot of queen x now in this spot um um and i mean i'd say i mean we should have like still have worse queens than him but like you know not not so many um but the other thing is like it's super hard for him to balance the turn raising range where you know once he starts putting a few bluffs in it's very easy to like take that way overboard yeah and start raising like a load of gutters on this turn card um and then nothing gets there on the river for him so he's yeah, going to end up yeah, with a lot true. of a lot of uh check back check back air on this river um to 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 not end up over bluffing this spot yeah um you know most players are just most players it's going to be like the turn raises like always queen queen x plus um and then 
you know, very a shred of bluffs. Yeah. And then it's then we just don't really have any bluff catches on the river. It's like pretty yeah. clear fold with anything worse than Queen Ten, I guess. Yeah. So I think that's the, the thing that he you know, if he uh it gets pretty tight or pretty strong for value. That obviously then affects the the number of combos he can he can bluff. Um, like you said, like it, it's very easy to to overdo it here. Um, but obviously, if he goes a little bit thinner for value, like you know does bet this hand, then we need to you know widen our bluff catch range uh, in response to that. So um, what, that, in and then that allows him to, to bluff a bit more. Say again. Uh, in re- you mean uh, when he bl- if he value bets this hand, we get to call what queen ten. Uh, well, no, I'm just saying that if he if he value bets this on the river, then he gets to bluff more. Ah, I see. But yeah, because yeah. he's not betting value betting this, his value range is is actually quite narrow, and therefore mm-hmm. he like he's then not afforded the, the the number of bluffs that you know. So if he if he value bets wider, uh, then he can throw in some more bluffs, basically. Yeah, um, I think one. I think the way that um, people think about this spot, yeah at the higher stakes is like once you've put in this much money you know with a turn raise and then it gets called like both ranges should just be very strong um and so like a just kind of a a simple way to think about it is like okay both ranges should be strong i'm not looking to thin value but you know Mm -hmm. strong range versus strong range and i can be very selective with bluffs yeah so i think I think for him, the best strategy here is just to have a, a very tight value betting range and also not bluff very much. Okay. Kings again. Kings again. So raise, get through about the small blind, and this time uh, you jam uh, 60 bigs effective. Uh, so I thought, you know, just to highlight the difference between this spot and the last one uh, where you yeah. had kings for fewer. You know, big blinds effective, but you went for a, a for a different line. So I just yeah, just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, um, this this is one of those spots where uh, it's well, okay. Let's talk about the differences between this and the last one. What, first thing is that we're a lot we're significantly deeper, almost twice as deep. Second thing is we're facing a small blind three bet instead of button. Um, and third thing is it's a different player. Um, yeah. And the other thing to take that I was quite in, that I think pushed me over the edge to, to jam here was the sizing. Um, to me, this sizing looks very value heavy. Um, just, you know, obviously I could be getting uh, owned by that, but I just, I, from just call it, you know, whatever my experience uh, and whatever, I just looked at this size and I was like, okay, that I don't think that this is going to have any bluffs in it mm-hmm. or many bluffs okay um now when when we're this this deep i much prefer to flat aces than kings as a trap because we're so much deeper that that the the equity retention matters more um you could four bet to you know to call off uh, for sure um but when you do that like you kind of you I don't I don't see people like just like loving life in that spot, right? If I four bet here no. and he's got tens and he's just like nice, I'm all in, you know. <laughs> it's just you know, I mean I think that you can sometimes get a, a really nitty fold there and also you you you're just gonna induce a flat, right? Yeah. Which is fine. You know, it's just good to get more money in with aces, but like um but but realistically you're only getting a five bet jam from a very tight range anyway. Yeah. Um, and, and so like, I, I would rather flat aces in this spot than Kings. Um, I guess the other thing is that you're the other difference. So you, you, you went through the three differences, uh, earlier. The other one obviously is that you're in position here. Um, so you're going to, you're going to have more flats. I imagine, uh, just, I mean, also the nature of this uh, hijack versus small blind, you're in position. So, yeah, I mean, I. To just to give you know why we're doing this spot i think i do it you sort of flat a lot of hands at 60 bigs effective um but i think you know what i'm hearing you say is that you felt like it was just value value heavy and uh, you put him with those hands that you don't think he's going to fold like 
let's put all the money in now and and then he has you, you know he has two de- you know, a decision between call and fold rather than like you said you know you click it or you, you know you four bet and then he has a you know he can call he can fold he can jam and so yeah i think that makes a makes a lot of sense yeah so so yeah um did, did you show what i do next already uh, i not, think actually. i'm not sure oh, it's just something. yeah so yeah yeah i think you did actually um yeah so that's what i'm saying like i think that four betting is is cool but uh i think this is slightly cooler um just because like yeah if, if he's if i think he's value heavy then these hands like uh jacks tens and queens jacks tens mm. um and ace king like okay ace king will jam if i four bet most of the time and so will queens but jacks and tens are just like in a really horrible spot versus a four bet but i don't think they ever fold here you know, maybe he can find a hero fold with tens, but it kind of looks a lot like I have ace king when I do this. Yeah. So I don't think he's going to find a fold with tens. Um. So that would be my my thought process here. Um. And yeah, it's kind of weird. It makes it hard to construct ranges, obviously, because you know what is my four bet range? You know, when I make it small, and like how do I balance this jam out? You know, but these are all questions for you know, other hands, you know, like yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, I, I, you know, I saw the, the, I feel like this was the best way to play this exact hand in this exact spot. And I'm not like, this isn't my like go-to strategy, but it, you know, when you make it this small sizing out of the, out of the small blind, it just like screams value to me. Yeah. And, uh, okay. and I really don't want to let him get away with that. Um, no. And what I really, so, really liked there was the, how you like just, you broke down the differences in between this spot and the and the last one um yeah i thought it was really good and something that i'm sure um a lot of the viewers you know need to do you know it's it, there are lots of differences it's not just facing a three bet with kings right it's stack sizes it's positions sure, yeah. it's a different player um so yeah lots of things i, I really like that it was really good um yeah he has yeah. aces no he has queens <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and things like this can really like make a huge difference um, to to how you know things work out for you in a tournament. You know, like mm. if you just spot like the you know a couple of big blinds difference in three bet size. I mean, okay, it, that could just be his standard size because the big blind only had thirty bigs, um, and right. that's why he sized it down a bit. But I still think like even even then, like when you have a bluff, you go like eight and a half to nine big blind. You know, because yeah okay like you know it's it's a little worse for you if the big blind gets involved but you know how much of a difference does that really make and given that like i'm already in position i can just flat so many hands versus seven and a half yeah that that like it's it just seems like it would be kind of nuts for him to like have king 10 off and make it seven and a half big blinds you know instead of eight and a half because because now i just flat him all the time and his life sucks on the, on the yeah. floor no, that's yeah very very true great point Okay, next one then. Uh, so you open with Jack Ten suited, get three bet and flat, and flops Queen for three. He bets uh, uh, just over quarter pot, and you call. Uh, are you always just calling here, or would you ever jam to, you know, potentially get some ace highs to fold? Yeah, uh, I think jam's fine here. Honestly, um, I try. One thing when you want to think about check phrasing, check shoving in three bet pots, uh, especially on two time boards, is quite a lot of time guys will have a check shoving range that is only flushes, flush draws. Um, because here, like, it, it's very easy to just check all queen x. Yeah. Right. And you, and like, and what, you know, over pairs are only aces and kings, which kind of want to check call as well. I mean, okay, you might want to check shove those, but it's like not that many combos, um, you know, because you might also put the four bed in pretty flop. Um, so if your range ends up just being always a flush draw and then like, a, you know, some shreds of queen X and aces, then you end up like giving them quite a quite an easy time on the flop. Yeah. That being said, like if your opponent is three betting and C betting, really really high frequencies then it just doesn't matter you know because they're not going to bet call off with ace 10 of clubs but i mean uh well yeah even then they might call it ace 10 of clubs but like let's say uh ace jack offsuit they're not going to call here no so so yeah it's it's always a you, you got to be careful not to like go nuts 
in those spots, but um, yeah, I wouldn't hate it. I think we have enough equity and, and fold equity just to, just yeah. to pile it in here. Mm-hmm. But I felt like playing finesse. Uh, okay, so goes check check on the turn, five clubs on the river, and you put them all in. Uh, so what are your thoughts here? Uh, well, I have jack high. <laughs> um, and I can't see another way to win the pot. Maybe bet 10 uh, could also work. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, so I'll uh, try and approach this seriously. Um, <laughs> obviously, like, You've got to be careful with flush draws, bluffing rivers. I know that, you know, the game sort of went through a phase where, you know, people figured out the solvers and then they figured out blockers and then they were like, wait a second, if I have two flush cards, that means they are missing two flush cards from their range. And then nobody ever bluffed a missed flush draw for like a year. Um, and I think that was pretty stupid. And like, also people have this thing where like, yeah, they the flush comes and they don't have one of the cards and then they don't bluff that either because it's like well i only you know i don't have a flush blocker therefore i never bluff right and i think people are massively overweighting blockers in their game um in this exact hand it matters a bit more uh than normal because we block uh ace 10 and ace jack of hearts which would play the exact same way um and those hands don't make uh, good river calls. But even as I say that, that's assuming that your opponent uses blockers incorrectly, right? Yeah. So in his spot on the river, if he has ace jack of hearts, he's going to think, well, and then I jam, he's going to think, well, I, I, bluff the, I block the jack of hearts, which is a bluff. But if I don't bluff the jack of hearts, then how is that blocker even relevant for him? Yeah, of course. He wants, then he wants me, then he wants to block it so that I don't have it and then I bluff more. Yeah. So the whole thing just goes around in a loop. And, yeah, of course. You know, um, I, I feel like people are using blockers in, you know, firstly, they're like over, um, uh, overemphasizing them. Secondly, that they're sometimes using them in logically like incompatible ways. Uh, so anyway, one thing I was just, just that's kind of like a random rant, but, um, you know, if you're the kind of person that doesn't bluff Jack-10 suited here because you have bad blockers, but then also doesn't call Ace-Jack suited here because you have bad blockers, then there's a logical <laughs> inconsistency in your yeah. game. Yeah. Unless you think you're the only person that doesn't bluff it. Right. But that's just clearly not true. Anyway, um, to, in this actual hand, like, I just think that I'm trying to think of my value hands is going to be pretty easy to find, just like any queen pretty much like i think Mad- like in this spot matter's probably gonna jam a lot on the turn with his queen x plus um and bet check back with jacks and tens a fair amount mm-hmm. um and so you know i'm not struggling to come up with value combos here um you know it's obviously a thin range but it's a, it's a three bet pot so it's always going to be like that um and then in terms of bluffs like my other f- Check call. My other hands that are worse than ace high. I don't think I particularly need to bluff ace high here because he should have, you know, some king high give ups here. And also, like, if you know, if I have ace jack, I can beat ace ten. Um, so, in uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, so, when I think about my hands that are worse than ace high. Um, it's kind of like king jack king ten of clubs would float flop which is fine um but it's not that many combos of that 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 hand class and then mm-hmm. flush draws so kind of all my bluffs have to come from flush draws i think or most of them um unless i want to start bluffing ace high as well yeah um and then this hand is like fine i think to bluff he should have queen ten off some uh, queen jack off sometimes probably not I mean, probably not actually, but you know, it's it's possible. But he, one of his main candidates for taking this line um, and then calling river would be jacks. Yeah. Um, so it's actually really nice to have a jack, and I think that pretty much overrides the other <clears throat> blocking factors. Yeah. Uh, jacks and tens as well. You know, I mean, yeah, they can check back flop, but I think he's just going to employ a, 
a range bet on this board or at least you know close to it so um so i'm, I'm actually pretty happy bluffing this combo um and uh and yeah that was a really long-winded explanation <laughs> I, I i think i preferred my original explanation which is i have jack high yeah um so similarly then 10 9 10 9 suited yeah. uh, if it would be you know because you feel like he occasionally is going to bet uh three bet nines and tens as well like obviously tens more than nines but um you know mm. blocking those exactly the same you know under pairs to the queen um yeah. seems to, to make a lot of sense plus then you you know you have 10 high rather than jack high so it's even you get even more yeah better and i also I also I didn't even say it, but Queen Jack suited of hearts and Queen Jack it's Queen Ten and Queen Jack of Hearts are like really nice like fine hands for him to take the slime with as well. Mm -hmm. Um and obviously Cool River. So um so yeah, actually this blocking the blockers on this hand are, are pretty damn good for, for this. And and yeah, it's actually kinda of hard for me to have worse hands, right? Like yeah. um seven, eight suited makes a pair, um same with eight, nine, and then six, seven makes a straight. Probably don't defend the six seven suited as preflop. Might not even open it. Probably open it, but um, might defend against Matas just to, you know, just to just to take it to the jungle. But but yeah, it's actually kind of hard for me to have a worse hand yeah. here than than nine ten of hearts. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. See, all, all in all, seems like a pretty slam dunk bluff here. Okay, that's going to wrap things up for part one. There is a part two, so make sure to come back next week to watch that. Massive thanks to Jack Sinclair for coming on. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Gareth James for mttpokerschool.com. Until next time, guys, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.